the second half. Here comes Good. Good and gonna score the two and one. Full drive inside. Stop. Hang on a pivot. Turn around. Jump shot is good. Jordan Battle with a nice spin move. Kicks it down low. Vardon. Big Maple with the finish. What's up, Black Hoops Nation? It is a beautiful Tuesday here in the great state of Utah. We are continuing with our coverage of the Utah Tech men's and women's basketball teams as we uh, bring you this Utah Tech week. I guess hashtag we are one as we introduce the Trailblazers, their first year of eligibility for the WAC tournament in their third year of the transition to the NCAA Division I era under a new brand. They were formerly Dixie State. Now they have changed to Utah Tech. And with me today, I have Utah Tech men's basketball head coach, John Judkins. John, uh, first off, I want to say congratulations. I, I don't think many people saw. Maybe they did sign a new five-year contract to stay in St. George. I mean, how – I guess how nice is it to have that security and to, to be committed to that program? You've been there for a long time, too. Oh, it's nice, and I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, we've been working on it for quite a while, and uh, – Finally get it done. We love St. George. I do. My family does. Um, it's some place we want to hopefully stay here as long as we can. So uh, I think the, the the future here is bright, and that's one reason why I was excited to sign the five year deal. And and again, we got a lot of work to do, but we feel that we're uh, we're making progress. We're being patient, and uh, this is just the start start of what we feel could be really big for us here at Utah Tech. I just want to just want to clarify for the listeners out there. John Judkins is in his 18th season. This will be your 18th season. Yeah, I don't, yeah, 18th, 19th, one of the two. Yeah. Goodness, that's the long longest tenured coach in the WAC by far. Um, <laughs> you picked up your 300th win at Utah Tech last year. Um, you have 583 career victories. I know you're a humble guy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be the one that likes right. squeeze this out. But he's the winning all-time winningest coach, collegiate coach in the state of Utah. I mean, uh, between Snow College and now Utah Tech, it, you must love the state of Utah if you're staying in the state of Utah with the success that you've had at both levels. Oh, uh, it's been great. I mean, the two places that I've coached have been outstanding. And you know, I again, I'm not a guy that just chases money. I'm not a guy that chases. Uh, you know, winning programs. I like to build. I like to build things up, and that's kind of what I did at Snow. And then, and then going from Division or JUCO to Division Two, I wanted to get that going. And now it's time to to do the D one. But again, we love it here. And I, I probably should hire you as my agent, man. You do a great <laughs> job. I need to. I need to have you sit down. I need to get some more money out of this deal. Nice. I, I you know what? I'm gonna stay out of that. I'll let uh, I'll let AD Beezer, you know, there you go, all that and so forth. I want to ask you, 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 you coached at Snow. You had assistant – your assistant from last year, Andrew May, is now the head coach there. What, what Was there any kind of pointers you gave to him going back to the JUCO ranks? I mean, I know he's had um, coaching experience at BYU and then under you at Utah Tech. Like, any, any thoughts that you gave to him going back to Snow College where you, 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 know, you started your coaching career? Yeah, first of all, I mean, my, my job is to win. I got to win games and, and graduate our, our players. Those are the two most important things. And then after that, it's it's try to help my assistants uh, get head jobs, get them a, a place that they can call their own. And uh, Andrew and all my coaches, when they're looking at jobs, they come in and we talk about it and we try to see a good fit uh, for them, just like we do recruiting, you know, same kind of idea. So when he came in and said that that job was open, um, you know, I, that's where I started. That's where I got my first head job. And so when he brought that up, it was kind of hard for me to say, hey, don't take that job. Stay here. Mm. So I was excited for him. Uh, I thought he had a good chance of getting that. And and then when he called me and said, hey, they offered it to me, what do you think? And, and I was really, really happy for him. So it's a great place to start. Uh, again, I love that I had a hard time leaving. That. That's, that's why I was there for 16-something years. Um you know, you start something, you get it going. And but for me, it was time for me to to try the four year thing. And that that's why I did it. And this is a great opportunity for him and, and for his family. And, and, and we wish him nothing but the best. And uh, so then we had to go out and find another assistant. And I came up and found Gabe Johnson from uh, Gabe, I call him Gabe, Gib, Gibson Johnson from uh, the University of Hawaii, uh, who has some ties here in Utah as well. And his wife's from from St. George and he's, he's been a good pickup. He's been really good. And, 
has brought us a lot of good uh, good ideas and energy to our to our staff. Talking about Gibson Johnson, he had a brother that played at Utah Valley. Did you, did you ever talk to him about that? I, I can't no, remember. I, the name. I know that he has a brother playing at Westminster. I know that, so we we've talked about that. But <laughs> uh, it's fun. We we see a lot of people. In fact, at Snow, I did recruit Gibson a little bit there, and then he walked on at Salt Lake Community College. So okay, it's been nice. good. Yeah. Nice. So I want to go back to your season from last year. Finished 13, 18 overall, 6 and 12 in whack play. But there were a couple of massive wins that you guys had. We're going to have an article coming out on Whack Hoops Digest about it, you know, later on today. But I want to ask you about playing spoiler. You're not eligible for the WAC tournament last year, but you I'm pretty sure GCU fans are still bitter at the Trailblazers for keeping them out of winning the WAC regular a share of the WAC regular season title. I mean, uh, that was one game, the 61-60 win over GCU. Uh, you had the wild win over Utah Valley at the Burns Arena, too. I, like, that was a crazy ending. At CBU, I think it was the third or fourth game of whack play, you came back from, I believe, it was eight down with a minute and 20 left or so to win. Um, and then the Southern Utah game, you guys came out on fire in the first half. And you kind of had to hold them off. I I feel like we got a glimpse of how good the Trailblazers can be when they turn it on. Like now you have a, all those veterans back except for Hunter Schofield and Brock Gilbert. But like talk about this team and the resiliency you saw in those four games. Like those just stick out like a, a th- you know sore thumb. It's a good thumb. No, you're right. You hit it right on the head. And, and that's kind of what we talked about with those off the year was over were those games that we, we came out and played really well. Those were our, our best ones. Um, you know, we, we had some bad losses. I mean, we lost to Yusun early in the year. We lost to Texas state that I thought was one of the best teams that we've played. It reminds us a lot of Albany Christian, just really pressure you and get into you. That was our first time of seeing that. Um, you know, but we, we had some great games, like you said. We played really bad against Southern Utah at Southern Utah uh, right before Christmas. And I think, I don't know if our guys were excited to go home. I don't know what the deal was. That was probably one of our worst games. But, uh, you know, we saw that that clips, like you said, of, hey, we're, we're right there. And then I go look, go back and watch film again of New Mexico State, who won our conference, and and look at those games, and I'll tell you, we were right there with them. Yeah, was, that, you know, that's we a were, good point. You were right there with New Mexico yeah, State a couple of times, too. A couple of times. So I, I think there's some really good uh, possibilities we could win some more games. We're getting better. We knew that it's going to take steps. We get that. The transfer portal is is incredible with, with teams, and, and we've used it, obviously, but uh, we don't get as many as more guys in our league get uh, because they've been established more. They've done – They've proven themselves that they're winners, and, and we got to get that so we can get some of those big time, big time players. But uh, you know, I like our chances. I like our staff. I like how we're we're working hard. We're getting better, and, and I love the whack. I mean, the whack is is really good. And to uh, to talk to to everybody um, and what we're trying to do with our schedule and different things, I, I I'm hoping that we get more than one team in the, the tournament uh, because I think I think there's teams being left out that that should be there. They're playing really well. So uh, we're excited for the WAC thing. Like you talked about the WAC conference to, to play in the tournament, the WAC tournament. It, we're excited for that this year. Now we have kind of something to, to set our goals on and, and try to achieve where the last two years it's been. We know what our last game is. We know when we're done. Uh, now we don't. Now it's kind of like a normal season where you play until, uh, until you lose. And, and hopefully our goal is to get to that tournament. And then, like you said, make some things happen. And if, if we're the team that knocks off teams, that's that's okay with us. <laughs> you don't just get to play spoiler now. You get to keep playing after that. Like, there's more meaning to those wins, right? Yeah. And, and it's hard. I mean, people don't realize that. But um, try to motivate your team knowing that, hey, my season ends on March 3rd. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's just now we, we have that motivation to keep them going. Hey, we, we're trying to get a better seed. We're trying to get up where we can. So it's going to be a lot more fun that way, but it's going to be hard. I mean, the wax, the wax good and they're not, they're not taking every team. So we got to earn our way in, even though we're accepted. Now we got to go earn it. And uh, we're excited for that challenge. 
Well, uh, you mentioned the transfer portal a few a minute ago or so, and I want to ask you about that difference from maybe the D two level to the Division one level, and how. I mean, I don't I don't know how it works at the D two level. If it's the same thing with recruiting out of that transfer portal, if it's different, can you elaborate on that and how that kind of changes? I mean, we've talked about it quite a bit, but like, so people understand the the difference in recruiting in that in that regard. Well, well, first of all, the D2 for us, they didn't have the transfer portal. Um, you know, it started when we moved to the to the Division One. There's transfers, but there's, you know, they had to sit out a year and all that stuff. And and we all went through that. But this transfer portal has changed the game a ton. Um, for us, it's changed us recruiting. You know, we're we're new, we're, we're growing, we're trying to get better. So we're recruiting these athletes and we get them. And I'll tell you what, the freshmen are really tough right now for us because if you – you get a really good freshman in and he takes off and explores. And uh, then you got some of these big schools that come in and say, Hey, I see this kid is really good. We, we want him. And then, you know, we could lose that kid to a bigger school. Um, and then you get a freshman that comes in and doesn't play a lot, you know, and sits yeah. the bench and guess what? He's going to turn his name in and try to go somewhere else. So it's really hard recruiting. Do you, do you go after those freshmen or do you kind of go more to Juco route? You know, we're kind of going through that right now and we're trying both. We're still, we don't know which one's better right now, but we, we feel that uh, we have a good hand in the junior college ranks to get them here. Um, and we're going to do our best, but it's changed the game uh, a lot, um, you know, good and bad. I, the only thing I don't like about it is that, you know, what kind of lesson are you teaching these young kids that when things don't go well, what do you do? You leave, you bounce and go somewhere else. I don't, I don't really like that because if they get into a job and they don't like it, that after basketball's over, they just get a bounce and go try to find another job. I mean, they got to learn to uh, to adapt, make a decision, and, and stick with it. And uh, and that's what we tell our guys. But but again, I, I get it. That's kind of how college basketball is going, and we have to to go with the flow. And we definitely will look at the portal pretty hard. We do every year, but uh, now it's even harder. We we try to get as many of those as we can. Yeah, I was thinking about, you know, as you're talking about that, how, and I asked other, I've asked other coaches this around the WAC, how, I guess, how hard is it to build a culture knowing that's kind of what you're facing at the end of each season where, you know, like you said, if a, if a young guy doesn't get the playing time he thinks he deserves, he immediately puts his name into the transfer portal or, you know, somebody has a big season and here come bigger schools calling and you know, like how tough is that where the turnover and you, ha you haven't necessarily experienced it a lot the first two years. I mean, you get a bunch of guys back both years, most of your guys pretty much. Um, but now you're getting to the transition period, you're kind of getting more steps. Like how difficult is that for you to build or keep that culture that you've kind of built at Utah tech? Oh, well, it's hard. It's, it's, um, uh... It's you're recruiting all the whole year. You know, <laughs> you recruit these guys to get them to come to you, and then when they get them here, you're still recruiting them to keep them. You know, it's it's hard. It's a tough, tough thing to do. But, uh, you know, I get it. I get it. And, and that's why, you know, we're out knocking doors and getting after it, trying to find the best player we can young. And we'll have, if we can get our, our foot in the door on some of these kids and maybe we don't get them right off the bat, but they go somewhere else and they all of a sudden they're not playing or they're not having a good experience, uh, we hope that they're the first we're the first team they call. So, but it's it's hard. Like I said, you're, you're you got to recruit your guys all year long to keep them. And uh, you know, it'd be nice to not worry about that and and worry about going and finding other players to make your team better. But you're you're kind of doing that, and everybody has to go through it. That's that's the good thing is we're all doing it, and and uh, it's just something we have to adjust to, and it's not easy. Yeah. So I want to ask you, I mean, Hunter Schofield was kind of the face of the program for the last, you know, three years or so. He, he's he gone to graduation. Um, I, I don't know that you can replace him, per se, I guess. I mean, we, you can elaborate on that, and then I'll ask you about the two big guys that you have on your roster that maybe will combine to fill those shoes, I guess you could say. Yeah, Hunter's – wow, he's um... – uh, you know, you go back and watch film. You go back and see what he accomplished last year with making the first team all uh, all whack. And uh, he was a special player, you know. But he was one that 
when we recruit him out of JUCO, right? Not a lot of people really wanted him, especially the D1 stuff, you know, the D2, what we were when we got him. And, and uh, I thought he was a D1 player. He was undersized. Um, you know, we played him at the five, which he probably was a four. Uh, but he, he caused some problems with uh, with guys guarding him. And so that's that's kind of why we we went to him a lot last year. And he, he led our team in scoring. Uh, with that, but again, tough guy to uh, to replace. So we know we can't replace him, but uh, everybody's got to step up, you know. And and so, you know, he's he had a great career. His body was worn out. Um, you know, he did everything he wanted. I was hoping to get him to go somewhere and play overseas somewhere, but he he did. His body was pretty beat up. So uh, you know, he went and got his his degree, went and did some other stuff with that. Has a family now. Has twins, um, and so he's 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 working and enjoying that time off but uh, you know we got some new guys we got uh, Tanner Christensen came in from a transfer on the portal uh, from the University of Idaho he graduated there in two years with COVID um, so we got him for three years he's working on his, his master's here in accounting uh, great great student great athlete uh, just just really smart got a great IQ on the game of basketball and we're excited to have him he's a lot bigger than Hunter He's definitely a five, not a four. Um, and so we're trying to get him to be a little bit like Hunter. We're trying to stretch his game out to shoot a little bit more on the perimeter. He's so good with his back to the basket, but we want to get him to to face up. And he's, he's doing that. And so, you know, that's that's one of our guys, Trey uh, uh, Edmonds. He's, he's done really good. He came on for us at the end of last year. Uh, didn't play a lot early as a freshman, and then he just got – better and better and and he's really improved a lot he's a great defender a great rebounder uh, just trying to work on his skills around the basket offensively and he's come a long ways with that I want to ask you about Trey I mean like you said he came on late last year and you see the the size and the athleticism and the physicality I mean you, you have to love that I mean you're a big guy too like you you have to love that that he didn't he didn't balk when his chance when he, his name was called last year. He just came on and contributed in a in a in a really solid manner. What are you kind of expecting from him in year two now that he's got the playing time under his belt? He's got a full off season of work. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm really high on this kid after seeing him last year, and you see him every day. So I'm curious what your thoughts are in his development. Yeah, he's he's come a long ways. He has the tools. There's no question. He has the tools. Um, sometimes he, he overdoes it. He tries maybe it's hard to say you try a little too hard. <laughs> um, you've heard that where you guys try to win a little too much or try to do too much. Sometimes he gets, that's one of his negative uh, things, but, but I'll take that. I'll take that any, any day of the week where I pull a kid aside and say, Hey, relax, slow down, you know, and let it come. I, I would take that over a kid. You have to push to try to get him to work hard. He has never had that problem. He's he just wants to go 100 miles an hour. He plays extremely hard, extremely physical. Um, like I said, I just we just got to get him. We got to get him to get a little bit better touch around the basket. Um, you know, he just he just goes so hard and so strong, um, and he's worked on that. And that's you know I see him in the gym here all the time. He's probably in the gym more than anybody we have on our team this year right now, of just working on his game and working on the things that. Uh, that we want to work. So I, I think the sky's high for him. Um, I think Tanner's a great fit for him to work together because they're, they're kind of different where Tanner can help him mentally and, and, and help him with his game that way. And I think Trey can help Tanner with his physical play and his quickness and his ability to do something. So I'm really excited, you know, excited for, for those two guys. It's gotta be nice for you to have, like you said, two six ten guys that are, maybe true five men instead of, you know, playing a dance L leader this year out of position or so, you know, even though that guy can play multiple positions on the floor. So yeah, it's, it's gotta be nice to have that size, especially when you look at the whack. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's what I was just going to say. We, we learned that really quick last year, how <laughs> physical and how big the whack is, um, you know, Stephen F Austin. I mean, some of those guys, Sam Houston state, they're just huge in, in Grand Canyon and Utah Valley. I mean, you know, the only team that probably really didn't have a big guy that we played was Seattle U, but they had those guards that were so dang quick and, you know, and fast. So, 
that's something that we definitely went out and recruited. Hey, we got to get bigger. We got to get stronger. Uh, and hopefully these are the guys that can get us there. Talk about Seattle use guards. You've got some really good guards yourself. Uh, I, I mean, Cam Gooden, Isaiah Pope, Frank Stain, uh, Noah Gonzalez is back for his sophomore year. Um, you know, you bring in Hagen right out of Snow College, that into the mix. Dan Cell Leader, we just talked about, who plays multiple positions for you. I mean, you, you've got a pretty good list of guards slash wing players yourself. Yeah, yeah, we like those guys. And, uh, you know, Hagen, Hagen was a new one we brought in, could really shoot the ball, great rebounder. Uh, and we needed some more shooters. That's what we felt like. We struggled last year shooting from the three-point line, and he's one that can do it. Noah – Noah's one of our best shooters. And again, a freshman coming in, I think he was a little bit nervous of, hey, should I shoot? Should I not? And I never, I never had too many players I had to tell to shoot the ball, but he was one that, that we had to say, shoot it. You're open. That's why we recruited you. That's why we want you. And, and he's, he's had a really good spring and summer. And, and right now, even the fall, he's shooting the ball extremely well. So that's good. Isaiah, I just love his leadership. I love how he sees the floor. That's one thing that, that hurt us against, uh, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think who it is, uh, Albany Christian, who hurt us this year with the pressure. Uh, Cam just could see over their pressure. Um, Isaiah has that size that, that can see over it and make that extra pass. Uh, and so we, we think Isaiah is going to play a little bit more one this year uh, than he did last year. Last year he played more to two in the three, and I see him playing more to two in the one. Cam – Cam's doing his stuff, I man. He can get to the basket. He shoots. He's shooting it better. He's doing the things. But those guys, they know. I mean, Isaiah and Frank. This is really the, this is their last year. They could come back next year if they want, uh, but they're going to graduate. So that's something that they have to decide. Just like Cam did this year. You know, he could have graduated last year, and he decided to come back and and finish his career. So we'll see how those guys. And well, Cam knows this is his last year. Um, Denzel knows this is his last year to finish. And so, and then again, Isaiah and Frank, we'll see where they, where they go. But Frank's been working hard, working on his game. He's shooting the ball extremely well right now for us. So we're excited. We think, we think this could be a good fun year for us. Speaking of the year, uh, you guys are going to be road tested early on in November. Uh, I think you have one home game in November and then a couple in December. Yeah. Uh, you start off at Nevada, um, you know, at Arizona, a couple other games. How does that help in a sense? I mean, I know you kind of have to play those games, uh, but does playing on the road so much help? I guess you can't, you can't do anything about it, but oh. playing on the road so much help in, in league play come, you know, December, you know, the end of December when that starts. Yeah, I, I think it does. Um, Two things I do like about road games. One, I, I really think it really brings your team together, um, makes them stronger, tougher, um, because you're you're with them all the time. We're at home, you're not. I mean, they're going to school, they're all over, but you know, you're in the bus, you're on the flights, you're in the airports, you're at dinner together. Uh, I think it binds and builds your your team chemistry, which I kind of like, especially when you have a lot of new guys. Um, I think that's going to help. Uh, you got to learn to win on the road. It's it's tough. It's tough to to uh, to win on the road. And the teams that normally have succeeded and do well late in the year is because they know how to win on the road. And so that's something that that we need to do. And and we got to win at home, obviously too. But uh, home is a little bit easier because of the fans and and the crowd and your own bed and, and all that stuff and your own bat shooting the same basket. So you got to learn how to to, to travel and. and that's something that I learned a lot last year in the WAC being our first year because really the first year we were eligible or got to, to the WAC, it was the COVID year, and you, you played everybody uh, two, two games in a row, uh, Friday, Saturday, and you didn't really travel a lot. I mean, you know, and so it, this last year was the first year we saw that. We kind of got an idea of um, how to travel in our conference, where to stay, where to eat, where to – do all these things. And, and we learned a lot last year. So um, hopefully we can put that to our advantage this year and, and use it. But we got to learn how to win on the road. And that's kind of why we do it. But you're right. Some of the games we kind of have to. Right. Um, and then also we're just, we're having a hard time. I'll be honest. Scheduling is, is brutal. Uh, teams just don't want to travel here, you know, yeah. and, and I know it's a tough place to play. And I know maybe it's hard to get there. And I, I'm hoping that 
uh, us and SUU can get together. We've already been talking about that, trying to to bring teams in to have them play them on a Thursday and us on a Saturday or whatever, just to try to get better teams to come in and play at, at home. But it's it's been tough, no question. I like that. I like that working together as schools to see what you can do. Because like you said, I mean, Cedar City, St. George, it's only like 50 miles apart anyway. So that's a good opportunity for teams to come in and play two games within a three-day – yeah, I like that. I like that thought. We'll see. Uh, so I want to ask you one last question here. Uh, you know, you're going to Idaho on November 19th. Uh, was that because you knew you were bringing in Tanner Christensen, or is that just the way that things played out? Oh, no, with, that's how it worked out. Uh, we, uh, you know, we got a three-game series with them where, they, like I said, you, uh, you, uh, you son, uh, what's it called? C Sun comes in and plays us. We go to Idaho. Then the next year, Idaho comes here and we go to CSUN. So it was just kind of how it worked out uh, that way. Again, just try to get some home games, whatever we got. We just don't have the money that some of these schools have of buying guys to come in and play. So we were trying to do the home and home or whatever we can do uh, with them. And that's how it turned out. It's just kind of funny how it worked out when we got Tanner after uh, we already signed the contract and got everything done. It should be fun for him. I know he's excited, um, but that's, that's kind of how it worked out. How do you feel about the last question here as we as we count, you know as we finish this up? You got six in-state games this year. I mean, you get Utah State and Weaver State on the road, but you also get Southern Utah twice and Utah Valley twice. Now that you know Southern Utah's in the whack, I it's unfortunate that all the the Division One teams won't play each other. But yeah, I mean that's that's awesome to have six in-state games because I feel like and you saw it. When Utah Valley came down there last year, oh. that was a pretty packed Burns Arena. Same with Southern Utah. And then you go up to the America First Center in Cedar City when you played up there. And it was a pretty filled gym. I mean, like, yeah. th- right. these are fun games. Yeah, especially right before Christmas where all those kids were gone. It, 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 that's something we were really excited for. And that's what we try to do. You know, back when I played at Utah State many, many, many years ago, <laughs> um, we, uh, you know, we did that. We played – we played uh, uh, BYU twice, home and home. We played Utah, home and home. We played Weber State, home and home. Um, that, that's what we did back then, and, and I know it's changed, but we gotta we gotta do a better job of trying to bring uh, you know bring those in. So we're gonna continue to do it. We talked to BYU a lot last year. We talked to Utah a lot, and and hopefully we can uh, get them on our schedule in the future. Absolutely, I love in-state games. They should be played every year. Um, I remember, you know, back in the day when Stu Morrill was at Utah State, I mean, he made sure he played every in-state Division One school. So uh, yep. 100% agree with you. I'm just glad that you got six of them. You do get to come to Utah Valley, the second game of WAC play, when there won't be any students on campus. So I'm pretty sure you're excited about that. Yes. Yeah, we love that. We love the three-day <laughs> weekends on the road. <laughs> oh, it's always a good time. John Judkins, the all-time winningest collegiate coach in the state of Utah. Utah Tech men's basketball head coach. John, thank you for your time. 48 days, I believe, to the wow. season opener at Nevada. How crazy is that? It's crazy. It's just going by so fast. We're not ready. we got a long way to go, but uh, I love how we're working hard. We'll get there. Thank you again. And everybody, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out of Whack podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Whack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Whack Hoops Digest for all your Whack Hoops news and information.